we are told in Scripture to pray. For some, this is easy. Others struggle. struggle. I can't even speak English. <laughs> Others struggle, particularly when praying out loud. However, prayer is a key to growing stronger in our relationship with God. Prayer is really about talking to God. Mind you that it is not a repetitious phrase or chant, but something far more interactive. So let's take a look. We're going to turn to Matthew 6, 5 through 13. And um, all I got to do is find it in my own Bible. Okay. So when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth that in all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father who sees everything will reward you. When you pray, don't babble on as and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need, even before you ask Him. Pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today the food we need and forgive us our sins as we have forgiven those who sin against us. And do not let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Now, I just wanted to look at something here. Okay. Starts with, and I'm going to take this kind of in reverse order, but he says, don't be repetitious. And when it talks about not being repetitious, it's, it's talking about um, really kind of idle stammering. That kind of stuff, right? It's just, it, don't be like that. Don't be just idle words. Not even clear. And not mindlessly repeating the same thing over and 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 over, and over again. Without really thought, you know what I'm saying? See, again, as I said, it's, it's talking to God. We're talking with God, right? So don't be repetitious. Don't be just idly stammering. Don't be mindlessly repeating the same thing over and over again. That's not what we're supposed to do. And then he talks about, I noted showtime, um, where he says, but when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you, and pray to your father in private then your Father who sees everything will reward you. In other words, it's not just trying to be on the forefront and out in the public with your, with your prayer. It's, there's nothing wrong with public prayer. But if that's your motivation, if it's about showtime, so public versus private prayer, anointed corporate prayer, which I believe is important, don't you? Yes. Next Saturday... Six o'clock, July 1st. July 1st, anointed corporate prayer. But anointed corporate prayer comes from within. Anointed corporate prayer comes from the time you were in the prayer closet with the door shut. Does that make sense? Let's see if I can move this microphone again. Probably not. I just have to get shorter as I speak. Okay. Yes. Um. So, anointed corporate prayer comes from within. It comes from in here, but it comes from the time alone with God. Right? Time alone with God is really important. And it's missing out of so many of our lives. We're busy. God, you know I'm busy. Right? See, 
Prayer is not so you can be seen. And that's what he talks about when he goes, you know, the, those that want to be out there in the, in the public square doing all their praying out there, you know, they have their reward. Why? Because the, they're praying for the reward. They're not praying for what God's going to do. They're praying for the reward of being seen. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, they pray so well. Yeah, that's if that's the motivation. See, so it comes to our heart attitude. What's your heart attitude in prayer? What are you after? You know, you can say, well, what is the what is the formula for praying? What formula do I need to pray? What are the right, you know, if I say these words, it makes it all work, right? That's what we want, you know, abracadabra. What's God's version of that? You know, oh, I know, in Jesus' name, right? But that doesn't go to our heart attitude at all. It doesn't go to our motivation in prayer at all. First Thessalonians 5.17, provided I can actually turn there successfully, says... Never stop praying. Never stop praying. We talk about prayer without ceasing, and if you're a King Jameser, right? Never stop praying. Well, here's the idea. First of all, the word pray there first denotes worship. Okay? Denotes worship. If prayer is communing with God, worship of God is a key component, component to that, right? I want to pray without ceasing. I want to worship without ceasing, okay? And we'll, we'll go into that a little bit more here in just a second. But continually is without cessation of routine or opportunity. Now, let me explain that to you. We get hung up on this, pray without ceasing. Is there anyone who can pray without ceasing as we typically describe it? No. You can try. You can be in an attitude of prayer. You can try and remember to pray. You can do all kinds of things to try and stay in that mode of praying. But you can't pray without ceasing as we typically interpret that. But here's the idea. It's, it's without cessation of routine. In other words, don't break the habit of praying. Does that make sense? So, you know, if you pray every morning when you wake up, don't break the habit of praying every morning when you wake up. Be consistent in your prayer life. Okay? In other words, we have to make it a priority. How many of you wear your seatbelt when you get in your car and go to drive? It used to be very few people wore their seatbelt. Well, of course, originally there weren't any seatbelts, so I guess that's, you know, this is where it comes from. But it used to be very few people wore their seatbelt, and then more people started to wear their seatbelt. And when there's all this studies and <clears throat> whatnot on, you know, why that's safer and, you know, it's going to protect you. And then we created a law, so if you're not wearing your seatbelt, you get a ticket. Some people, that fixed it for them. It's like, oop, I got to do this so I don't get a ticket. Other people still struggle to remember to put their seatbelt on. Okay? Here's the deal. If you get in your car to drive and you put your seatbelt on 14 times in a row, you'll never forget to do it. That's it. Get in the car, put on your seatbelt the next 14 times, and you'll never forget. Why? Because you created a habit. Seatbelt without ceasing. Okay? Make sense? Same thing with prayer. Oh, it's hard for me to remember to pray. Well, you know what? Do it 14 days in a row, and you won't forget anymore. You know, tie a, tie a red ribbon around your finger if you need to. Oh, yeah, pray. Got to pray. You know, after 14 days, the ribbon will be kind of scummy looking, and you can throw it away. All right? 
Um, but you'll have created a habit, a routine. And then it also means opportunity. Pray without missing an opportunity to pray. How many of you look at opportunities to pray? How many of you look at opportunities to praise God? How many of you look at opportunities to worship? Right? It's, it's a mindset. It goes to your mindset about how you think about this. Don't miss an opportunity to talk to God. Well, that seems like it would be good for your relationship. Not to miss an opportunity to talk to God. And what if we applied it to our marriage? Eh, sometimes I talk to my spouse, sometimes I don't. That's true. No, it's not. Good grief. Doesn't say I have to talk to you without ceasing. Come on. <laughs> But do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? Create that habit. Take advantage. Start to look for those opportunities. You'll do what you look for the opportunity to do. Right? The, the, it's what are you looking for? Are you looking for an opportunity to worship? What did Abraham say? The, the, the lad and I will go and worship. We talk about, well, he knew what it was coming, but you know what? He was looking for an opportunity to worship God. Are you looking for an opportunity to worship? Are you looking for an opportunity to pray? Somebody starts to tell you something, this is the first thought. Ooh, cool, an opportunity. I could pray about that. Right? Something happens, and you're like, ooh, cool. I could worship God for that. That's awesome. I could thank God. So, they come to Jesus, and, and he's talking about this, and it's like, how do we pray? Teach us to pray. And so what he says is this. Covers the things we talked about, although we talked about them in reverse order. He says, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where every can see, everyone can see them. I tell you the truth. That is all the reward they will ever get. But when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private then your father who sees everything will reward you when you pray don't babble on and on as the gentiles do they think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again don't be like them for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him and then he says pray like this now i want you to think about the last part of what he said there about repetitive words, but he says, don't be like them for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. So, the trick to praying is this. You need to pray the right scripture. Right? Or is it you need to have the right relationship with God? You pray Jesus over you? <laughs> no, I was just messing with you. Yeah, so it's, it comes down to if God already knows what I need, then it's not all about how I formulate the request, is it? If God is the source of my solution, then it's not about what I ask him for in specific. If it's God's will that I want to be done, it's not about what I want. Kind of gives you a different perspective on prayer, doesn't it? See, he says this. He says, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. It starts with worshiping God. As Pastor Steve likes to say, it's worth-ship. Who am I praying to? God Almighty. Yes. Holy is your name, God. Powerful and mighty are you, God. Who am I talking to? I'm talking to the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. I can, I can come boldly into his throne room, but I need to come in respectful of who I'm talking to. I'm talking to the King of Kings. Proper reverence. 
Father God in heaven, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's what's going on in the heavenlies, but there's what's going on on earth. And I got news for you. Your earth. May your will be done on earth. Here. This earth, God. May your will be done here. Not my will. Let me see. Let me think what scripture I need to pray so I can get what I want. No. God, get this earth in line with your kingdom, with your will. Get my heart right. See, that's the beginning. That's the worship side of it. God, you're holy. God, I want you in charge. God, I give you my earth. You be Lord over me. What you want, God, not what I want. Give us today the food we need. And it's interesting, there's a footnote on, on this. It, give us today the food we need. And we already know you're going to take care of tomorrow. Right? It's recognizing he is the source of everything I need. We haven't even asked him for anything specific yet. We're just, we're just talking about him being in control. We're not over and over repeating, God, I need you to do this. God, I need you to do this. God, I need you to do this. We're recognizing that he knows what he needs to do. More than I know what I need him to do. I'm giving it to you, God. Whatever I need today, I'm just asking you to take care of it. Because that's what you promised. And then we get to the part where we have to start dealing with this old flesh of ours and forgive us our sins. Not forgive me if I sin. It's kind of an established fact. I probably screwed up already. Forgive us our sins. Forgive me for what I've done wrong. The stuff I know, the stuff I don't know. Most of it's stuff I know, but I like to pretend like I don't. Forgive us our sins. As we've forgiven those who sin against us, and we talked about that a few weeks ago, we need to be forgiving like Christ gets in the way of our getting forgiveness if we don't. You can hold on to a grudge all the way to hell. That doesn't seem like a good plan. Just saying. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. Don't let us give in to that, but, but keep us from the evil one. And that's how he says to pray. That's the answer to their question, how do we pray? I didn't see any place in there where he said, look for a scripture that lines up with what you want. I'm not trying to mess you up on, on th thoughts about this, but you, you know what? If you're just honest with God... And if you put him first as Lord of, of your life, and if you recognize who you're praying to, and you begin by recognizing that as in your worship of prayer, it's really hard to screw it up. It's very hard to screw it up if you, if you stop working, you know, looking at what I want and start praying what God wants. I've said before, you pray until you have peace, but you know when you have peace is when your heart's in line with God. When you get your will in line with his will, that's where peace comes from. Someone's in the hospital, you want them healed. You can ask God to heal them. And you can say, God, I want to see them healed. But more than anything else, I want your will, God. I want your will here on earth as it is in, in heaven. God, I want your will over over my attitude. God, I want your will over their situation. God, I, I want you to be Lord over all of this. And I can pray that until I have peace. 
I don't have to worry about what, why didn't God answer my prayer this specific way? I don't know, why did you ask him to answer it your way? Why didn't you ask him to answer it his way? Why didn't you ask him to show you his way? God, show me what you want in this situation so that I can get my attitude in line with yours. So my flesh will be under your will like it is in heaven. God, that's what I need. I need you to do what, because guess what? When I start thinking that I have a better plan, what that also says is I don't trust God for his plan. Think about that. Well, I don't want to just pray God's will. What if it doesn't turn out the way I want? We don't say it that way, but we think it that way. Right? If I truly trust God, if I truly believe that he's Lord of all, if I truly believe that he's in charge of everything, if I truly believe that he's a good God, if I truly believe that he cares about me and he cares about all the little details and he knows how many hairs are on my head and I don't and I don't even have that many to count. But if all that's true, then don't I want his will? If his ways are above my ways, don't I want his will? If he really is the sovereign God of the universe who holds the, the world in the palm of his hand, don't I want him to be the one making the decisions instead of me? I mean, I'm not going to pick on you too much, but you have trouble figuring out what you're going to eat. I don't know. Where do you want to go? Right? Right? Yes, stand there in the closet and what am I going to wear today? I try and keep my life really simple. I have a lot of things that are the same, so I can just, you know. Did you wear that yesterday? Well, no, but I wore something that looked exactly like it. <clears throat> yes. I had three of those jackets. I got 12 of those pants. I got, you know, it's really simple, just dressed. Uh, but but you see what I'm saying? We, you know, we struggle with the simple decisions. Shouldn't we let God handle the stuff? It seems like a better plan. So when we talk about how to pray, it starts with worship. Who am I praying to? And what do I really believe? Do you believe that he's Lord of all? Do you believe that his name is holy? Do you believe that his will should be done? Do you, do you believe that he's God, the sovereign God of the universe? Tell him that. And then tell him, it's your will that I want, God. Why? Because he gave us choice. You can choose to try and do it your way. So when you say, God, not my will, but yours be done, I'm surrendering my will to him. I'm putting that in alignment with his, with his will. I'm, God, I want, I want what you want. That's what I want. Whatever restaurant you pick is fine with me. Okay, I give it to you, God. I surrender. I crucify my flesh. I surrender my will to yours, whether I understand it or not. It's the recognition of his sovereignty. God, I recognize you as the sovereign Lord of the universe. Do what you do for you. Right? And then give thanks. Well, I don't have anything to be thankful for yet. Oh, yes, you do. <laughs> All of the things you just said. Be thankful for that, right? That's exactly right. You're breathing. Your next breath is right here in the palm of his hand. Be thankful for that. God, I draw my next breath. Thank you. Thank you that I drew the last one. Right? Give thanks. God, I thank you for what you're going to do. God, I thank you because I don't understand if you're going to raise this person up or if you're going to take them home. God, I just ask that you would make sure that they know you before they go. And if you raise them up, that's great. But God, I put it all in your hands and I thank you right now. God, I thank you because I know that you are going to do what's best. God, I thank you because I know your ways are above my ways. I thank you because I know you're going to do what needs to be done in this situation. A heart of gratitude for a great and mighty God who really is in control of it all. And my will surrendered, so I'm not 
having anxiety and fighting against God. And then recognizing the authority in which we pray. We, we like to pray and end our prayers with, in Jesus' name. Nothing wrong with that. Because we're talking about the authority in which we're praying. The authority that allows us to do these things. It's not the authority so I can get what I want and ask for what I wanted. It's the authority to be in the throne room. It's the authority to be before the king. It's the authority to be over the, the, the magistrate that controls it all. How am I able to walk into the throne room and, and petition the king of kings for something? It's in the authority given to me by Jesus Christ and what he did. It's because of what he did that I'm allowed in the throne room. I have to recognize that I'm, I'm only there because of what he did. I can have proper respect for the, the king that I stand before. I ask this in your name, Jesus. That's, that's not the abracadabra word. That's recognizing the authority of who I'm speaking to. It's not the final sentence on the prayer so I can say, well, that's the magic words that make it happen. It's completing the process. I started out giving him worship because of his value, and I ended my, my petition before God by saying, I remember and I recognize that I'm only here because of what you've done. Because of how great you are, that's how come I'm able to even speak these words. And Father, I want your will to be done. And I ask only in the authority that you've given me. Does that make you think a little bit different about prayer today? Now, here's the thing. We're going to have a part two to this. Because I think it's important that we learn to pray. I think it's important that we learn to pray not only in private, but we learn to pray so that when we're in when we are in public, we have the right heart attitude. We get all stressed out when we have to pray in public because we, what if I say the wrong words? Well, guess what? The words that come out are only what's in your head and your heart. If your head and your heart are surrendered to God, the words will come out right. And shame on anybody if they're critiquing how you pray anyway. Supposed to be a conversation between you and God. But the anointing, that comes from that time you've been spending with God. It spills over because it comes out of your life. It comes out of your mouth. It comes out of your heart. It comes out of your mind. Why? Because that's where your heart is. Does that make sense? All right. Well, that's it for this week. Mm -hmm.